Unless you have been living under a rock recently, you have probably heard of the multitude of protests and demonstrations that have occurred in the realm of the sports world. From kneeling during anthems, marching against police brutality, and seeing news reports regarding whether transgender athletes should be allowed to compete. The sports world has never been more active in politics than it is in the modern day. However, before we look at the specific histories, let's just talk briefly about what I consider to be the three waves of activism in sports. The following is how I will divide up the videos in this series. The first wave I like to call the integration wave, which is generally around the 1950s and 1960s. During this time, protests and demonstrations, while they occurred, were still unheard of for the time. Although the importance of this era in sports was that it set the framework for athletes of color and athletes of gender to experience opportunities competing against white athletes. The second wave I call the Valley Wave. It's an odd, seemingly irrelevant name, I know, but if you look at the whole history of activism in sports and divide it up into three waves, then this particular period stands out because, on the surface, there wasn't much being done by the players and organizations. So in that sense, you could consider this era a valley because of the mountains or monumental times that came before it and after. And lastly, in the modern day, we are experiencing the power. Power more than ever has been given to the players. Rightfully so, since the players and the competitors are the ones who generate the revenue. But since in today's world social media and networking are so easy, organizations, player unions, and any of the other ways that players can band together are becoming more and more frequent. And since this collectivity is more prevalent in today's game and leagues, the players hold more leverage over the ownership and can demonstrate and protest more aggressively now more than ever. 